This video was made possible by NordVPN. Today I'm going to share with you my journey to cooking a perfect, delicious and impressive cast iron steak that will make your mouth water. And the best part, it is easy. Knowing the do's and the don'ts is the key to success. I'll be cooking 4 different types of steaks to give you options so you can cook it using anything you have it at home. Including a ceramic stove, a powerful gas stove, a wood pellet smoker and obviously to finish it off a charcoal grill. This is mastering the cast iron steak, so let's do it. These are the star of the show. They are 4 bony in New York strip. If you like your steaks medium rare, the perfect thickness is 1.5 inches thick. Any smaller you can run the risk of overcooking it. And as you can see, the marbling in these steaks is impressive. That's these little white spectacles you see throughout the meat. Always look for a well marbled steak. Instead of adding oil to the pan, I'll be spreading it throughout the steak. This avoid extra unnecessary oil into the pan, which normally you would have to strain it anyway before butter basting it or making your sauce. Once fully coated, I season it well with coarse salt and freshly ground black pepper. I do recommend freshly cracked pepper, as I can guarantee you it tastes a lot better. Make sure you season it well. An unseasoned steak is like a burger without bread, or a pizza without cheese, or rice without beans. I think you got the point. And these are all the ingredients I'm going to be using to cook along with this amazing steak. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below. This right here is beef stock. I made it myself using a few ingredients like beef shank, carrots, celery and onions. But to make this easy for you to make it at home, you can buy the pre-made one. The next ingredient is whipping cream. Adding this to the sauce will give a nice smooth flavor and most important, it will make it creamy. If you enjoy a thick sauce, a thickener is a great thing to use. There are several types of thickeners. Here is an easy one for you to get started. Mix water with cornstarch. This creates a slurry, which you can add to the sauce and bring it to a small boil. And it will thicken your sauce nicely. Just remember, don't add too much because it can make it real thick. Since I'm using my home oven, the first thing I need to do is preheat my cast iron skillet. Set your oven on high and preheat it for about 5 minutes. Once that's done, add your steak. Remember that we already added the oil to the steak, so there's no need for additional oil in the pan. Make sure you have all windows open and a well-ventilated kitchen, because there will be smoke like there's no tomorrow. Whenever you're browning meat or fat, this will happen. You can't avoid the smoke, so as long as you are aware of it, you're good to go. After exactly one minute, you want to flip it to the other side. At this stage, the first side is not ready yet, but we will flip it once again to finish it up for an additional minute. In essence, your goal is to sear both sides for an exactly two minutes each. This should give you a nice crust. Do not forget to sear the fat. Raw fat does not taste good, but a well caramelized fat is like sweet candy and one of the best part of the steak. Once the steak has been seared, lower your temperature down to medium low heat and throw in your butter, crushed garlic and rosemary. The goal is to let your butter brown. That is the flavor you crave on a perfect steak. Never let your butter turn black. If your heat is too high, that will happen and you will ruin your steak. You want to baste it for about 1 minute per side. This will give your 1.5 inches thick steak a perfect medium rare doneness. If you like it medium, just baste it for 1 additional minute per side. Once the steak is done, quickly remove it from the cast iron and throw it into a plate. Add the wonderful butter and the herbs. You must let your steak rest anywhere from 2 minutes to 6 minutes. This will allow it to continue cooking and redistribute the juices. The time all depends on your room temperature. If you are in a very cold environment, don't let it rest for too long. I usually do 4 minutes and it's always perfect. Now all there's left to do is to slice it and enjoy this amazing steak. As you can see, it was perfectly cooked. It's juicy and it has a good crust but it can be improved. And I'll show you how to do that on my next steak. But first, let me show you how easy it is to make this amazing sauce. And here's how to do it. Using the same pan under medium heat, add your beef stock and deglaze it. This means to remove all the fun that is stuck into the pan when you were searing it. Make sure you leave nothing behind. Then throw in shallots and garlic. You don't want to cook them for too long or get any color. If your beef stock starts to evaporate, just add a little more to make sure we have plenty for our sauce. Then throw in heavy cream and mix everything well. Now you want to reduce your heat to medium low heat and taste it for salt. Since my steak had a good amount of salt, there was no need to add any more. The same goes with black pepper. There's no need to add as I got it from the steak. To thicken it up, I threw in my slurry and bring it to a light boil. Keep stirring it and your sauce will go from something liquid with it to a perfect sauce. And now all there's left to do is to taste it. Before we move to the next steak, we're gonna actually try this one while it's still hot. Huh? What do you think about that? 
I'm not opposed. <laughs> I'm definitely not opposed. Let's do it then. Oh, so, I'm going to get some of that juice from the bottom. Perfectly medium rare, everybody. Cooked to perfection. I hope you came through the camera. There's a few disadvantages about cooking that inside and also on the stove. You tell me. First <laughs> thing. First of all, if your wife was home, <laughs> you would have gotten an earful because it looks like there was a fire in that house. It, there is a lot of smoke, smoke everywhere. You're searing fat. You're making that Maillard reaction amazing. You know, you want that crust and that crust makes smoke. All right. Yeah. And then on top of that, that stove doesn't get hot enough to get the crust nice and quickly. So you got to work for it. You got it. Right. But at what cost? I know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And the most important thing to do is to try and let you know. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Mm. Even my dog wants some. Mm. 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 That's nice. I will say this. If you have a high quality steak, you really don't need to make a sauce. But it's a good practice. It's already there. You just got to add a few ingredients and rock and roll. So here you go, Angel. I'll try it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, mm. that's a nice sauce, man. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. And on that one, I'm gonna cook some things that my nephew Angel might not enjoy very much, but we're gonna see how he likes it. <laughs> For my second steak, I'll be adding some green stuff, as my nephew calls it. It's also known as asparagus. It is easy to do and also healthy. To season the steak, I use salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. Since I won't be using fresh garlic, garlic powder works great. Unlike my previous steak, which I used time to tell the temp, this one I'll be using a wireless thermometer. This takes out all the guesswork. I can flip it as many times as I need, get my crust as hard as I want, and does not matter what I'll do, it will ensure perfect doneness when I'm done with it. For my asparagus, I first like to blanch it. This does two things. It improves the color, making it bright green, and it also cooks to perfection as I can stop the cooking process by using an ice bath. To me, the most flavorful part of the asparagus are the top. Usually by bending it, it will break at the perfect section, leaving you the best part behind. So to save time, I usually break two. I tie the rest and cut it off with a knife. This leaves me with the best part of the asparagus. To finish off my steak, I will also be basting with butter. That is a key ingredient to turning a good steak into an amazing steak. And for this cook, I'll be using a way more powerful stove. This will give you a much better browning. Since it's gas, it's much more powerful, just like they use on the restaurants. I started by adding a little bit of grapeseed oil. You don't want to use extra virgin olive oil. Grapeseed oil has a high smoke point and it's neutral in flavor. Then I threw in my steak. Since I'm relying on my thermometer, I kept flipping it as many times as needed to get the perfect crust. That's the beauty of using technology to your advantage. Once that was done, I lowered my heat and threw in my butter to start basting. I want you to notice that my butter is brown and not black. I can't emphasize enough how important that is. Do not use black butter. To finish it off, I caramelized my fat. My internal temperature was 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius. Once my wireless thermometer warned me, I took it off and let it rest. Do not forget that beautiful brown butter. That is like an amazing sauce for your steak. As I mentioned before, when you're letting it rest, the steak temperature will rise and mine rose to 135 degrees Fahrenheit or 57 Celsius. As that was happening, I cooked up my asparagus by throwing it into boiling water. To know it's fully cooked, just take a paring knife and stick it until you feel no resistance. If it feels like butter, it's ready. Then you want to throw it into a nice bath to stop the cooking process. Season it with flaky finishing salt, freshly ground black pepper and a good olive oil and your asparagus is done. Now all there's left to do is to slice my steak. I first started by removing the bone, then I cut it up into perfectly sliced piece of steak heaven. Hey, it looks good. One for me, one for you. <laughs> Before, Why are you laughing? Before we that move was not on, a joke. Why are you laughing? <laughs> before we laughing move on to the next why. next steak, everybody, we're gonna give it a try. And my wonderful nephew here is also going to try this the steak. <laughs> Green stuff, bro. All right, everybody, enough talking. We're gonna give this a try. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah, boy, that's soft too. If you had one thing in this, yeah. Then both of those steaks would have been perfect. What? But it's missing. What? It's MIA. And I'm not talking about Miami. What are you talking about? Charcoal, bro. That's right. <laughs> you gotta have I agree charcoal, with you. Bro. You're gonna give it a try? No. <laughs> you wanna try it at all? No. Just smell it. Just look how good it smells. Mmm, that's so good. Look, it's it. Mmm. Try it. Mm, I'm sorry, people. That's not my thing. <laughs> Take his word for it, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> he he never lies to you guys, so you could just take his word for it. <laughs> All right. If yeah. I try it, I might lie and be like, mm, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, no green stuff for my nephew Angel. With that being said, my next take, I wanted to push the limits and cook it on my smoker. I kept the seasoning the same with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. I made sure to season all sides. For my next attempt of my nephew Angel eating some green stuff, I will pan sear some zucchini. When you do this, it becomes soft, almost like a puree type. And hopefully, he will give this one a try. I cut them into nice, even, thin strips. This will ensure even cooking and browning on my pan. I won't be seasoning it now, but will once it's done cooking. Under medium-high heat, I seared it until I had a nice golden brown color. When I got my smoker, I got with a side burner called Sidekick, which is perfectly for searing a steak. I wanted to see if the actual smoker could cook it, so I added directly on top of the wood fire heating element. Threw in my grapeseed oil and let my pan preheat. And to my surprise, when I added the steak, it was sizzling. I cooked my steak using the time method. Remember, one minute per side and flip. To see if there was going to be any smoke flavor added to the steak, I didn't butter baste it. I just let it cook with the lid closed and gave it an additional 3 minutes to finish it off. When it was done, it looked like it worked perfectly. And hopefully it will give a nice wood flavor taste to my steak. And to finish up the zucchini, I seasoned it with flaky salt and freshly ground black pepper. And it was ready for my nephew to give it a try. Cutting up the steak, it was perfectly cooked to medium rare. And saying it, it was juicy was an understatement. What do you think about this method, Angel? Huh? Uh, it took a little longer. Yeah, Maybe I agree. we got a little different flavor? There's no butter basting on this one. It's straight up flavor, yeah? I don't taste that much wood flavor. No, there's no wood flavor at all. It tastes phenomenal, <laughs> but it doesn't taste like smoke. It doesn't have the wood flavor. I, I was agree. expecting it to have a little bit of a wood flavor, so I was like, mm, <laughs> this one might be the best one. That's but why you got to use it without, without the cast iron, and you just put it in your smoker, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now to the exciting part. Are you ready? Yeah. No. Would you try it for me? Just for me. Just a little bit. If you don't like it, you let them know, yeah? But that's Look, so I, I can see I can see the eye convincing him. Yeah, for me, come on, bro. Come on. For oh, no, uncle. no, no, just because of that, no. <laughs> no, nah, come on. For your uncle, bro. Come on, come on. I'll try a real small. Yeah, like small, that much, yeah? That much? Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> where are you going? Angel, where are you going, Angel? Come on. <laughs> It's delicious! How can you not like it? Mmm! <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> Felt like a banana. <laughs> Cooking is something you do with passion and knowing what your family likes or dislike is key. So on my final steak, I'll be hitting all marks and making it the best cast iron steak there is. I started by dry brining the steak. This is my number one go-to method when seasoning beef. It sounds fancy, but it's pretty simple. All you have to do is to season it like you normally do with salt. As always, make sure you coat all sides. Transfer it to a cooling rack and let it rest overnight in your refrigerator. This will allow the salt to penetrate deeply into the meat. Yes, it does dry out moisture but it goes right back in. Salt is too big to pass through a cell membrane, but water molecules can fit. Since everything wants to reach equilibrium, the only thing that can flow to create equal concentration is water. This is a real-world example of what's called osmosis. The very next day, you can clearly see that all salt is gone. That's because it's all inside of the meat, making it perfectly seasoned. Another benefit of this method is the outer layer will be drier, which will make an awesome crust. To go along with our steak, I'm also making the perfect side dish, which is mashed potato. And here's the easiest mashed potato in the world. I started by peeling them and cutting them into one inch cube. This will ensure they cook evenly. Boil them until it's nice and tender. To make sure, all you gotta do is get a repairing knife and if it feels like butter, it's ready. Drain the water, add butter, cream cheese, and using a smasher while everything's still hot, combine all the ingredients together. Finish with a little bit of milk and salt. Mix everything well and your mashed potato is done. Now going right back to our steak. I seasoned it with freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Do not add any additional salt. Remember, it was dry brined overnight. To finish it off, I'll be using thyme and butter and the thyme method you already know how to do. But now I say it is enough talking and it is time to cook the perfect cast iron steak. So let's do it.
right, everybody, our last and final steak. What do you think, Kenjo? See, now, now we got two good things going. <laughs> we got some charcoal in the steak <laughs> and a vegetable that I like. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. That's not... <laughs> The most important thing when you are cooking a steak, everybody, is to cook with love and cook the things that the person you are cooking for likes. You ready for it? Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. I'll tell you one thing right now, the perfect combination is this one. But with that being said, here's all the do's and don'ts and everything I have learned cooking with cast iron. Check Do it this. out. Do this one. <laughs> Before I give you my final tips to a perfect cast iron steak, I want to talk to you today about NordVPN, which is the sponsor of today's video. As you know, VPN stands for a virtual private network. I use it whenever I'm at home or if I'm traveling. It does a number of things that I found very useful. One of the things I do is connect to a server here in the US whenever I'm traveling abroad. So whenever I connect to Netflix, Comcast or other sites like that, which connects differently in other countries, they work the same as if I was just here at home. Another thing is if you ever got a notice of a video that is not available in your country, Country, with a click of a mouse, you can actually teleport to a different country and that video will now be available to you. <laughs> that is awesome. This is so useful because in some countries like China, they will prevent you from watching YouTube because of their firewall. Also, when I connect to a hotel network, they cannot monitor my internet and NordVPN does not log data or any of its user data, which means that it does not keep track of any of its site that you visit. Now for a limited time, you get 70% off NordVPN. This special offer means that your subscription is just $3.49, so you can browse and shop securely online. Keep in mind that NordVPN is compatible with any device you might be using. If it's an iPhone, if it's a Mac, if it's a PC, you're good to go. So please check out nordvpn.com slash Guga or use my code Guga and get an additional month free. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Here are my five tips for a perfect cast iron steak. Number one, be aware you will create a lot of smoke when searing your steak. So if you're doing indoors, make sure you open all windows and have a nice ventilated area. Number two, get your pan hot. If not, instead of browning your steak, you will steam it. And there's nothing worse than a boiling steak. So get it hot. Number three, when searing is done, lower the temperature and baste your steak with butter. Never let your butter turn black. If it does, throw it out and add a new one. Don't ruin your steak with black butter. Number four, use some types of aromatics like thyme and rosemary. It doesn't matter whichever one you like best. Put them on top of your steak and butter baste it. Make sure you get every single edge. That will give your steak an amazing flavor. Number five, and this one is the most important of them all. Cook your steak the way you like it. Using a thermometer makes it easy. My preferred doneness is medium rare, but if you like it medium, cook it medium. Now, if you like it well done, we all know how I feel about that. But as long as you're having fun doing it, your steak should come out perfect. Just practice. The good old saying of practice makes it perfect is true. And there's nothing wrong with practicing and eating amazing steaks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Which one is your favorite? This one. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.